welcome back to Tattoo Talk Tuesday. Today we are going to be talking all about dry healing and how to do it. How to, how to dry heal a tattoo. I have some experience with dry healing as it's something I do with all of my tattoos for the first three days and then the last part of the healing process I usually moisturize the tattoo when it feels tight. For this video, I will be dry healing the color portion of my back tattoo. If you are wondering about my back tattoo, I have four videos all about the first, second, third, and fourth session. And I will be dry healing the fourth session for you guys, which was the color. If you're like, hey, this isn't a true representation of dry healing a tattoo, let me tell you, it took a long time to put the color in and it's pretty large. So I'm just gonna go for it and you guys can use it to dry heal some of your smaller pieces or maybe you have a large piece like me. So the first thing you'll need to dry heal your tattoo is water. And you're like, oh, dry healing. Well, when you get home from the tattoo shop, your tattoo will most likely be wrapped in bandages. If your tattoo artist doesn't do that, I've read in the comments, hey, my tattoo artist doesn't wrap my tattoos. I just think it's best to have your tattoo wrapped, especially if you are traveling home, bus, car, train, airplane. Having your tattoos wrapped can be beneficial to you. I like to sleep with my tattoos wrapped the first three nights. And with my tattoo on my back as large as it is, Generally, I will leave the bandages on that the tattoo artist gave me and then I will sleep. However, I am usually home by like 6 p.m. So I'm only a couple more hours until bedtime anyway. So if your bandages are really soiled or falling off, I would just recommend re-wrapping them. Once I am done with that, I will wash my tattoos. A lot of people ask me, how do you wash your back tattoo? And I just kind of put my arm like this and wherever I can't reach, I will push my arm. You can kind of see that pushing it gives me a lot more leeway and then I can reach underneath and then push it up that way too. That way the whole back, boop, boop, boop. The soap I use is a combination of Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap diluted with water. It helps to have a spare bottle so you can dump exactly half and then fill the rest up with water. I like to use peppermint especially on my back because it does have a cooling sensation. So it helps me know where I need to wash because your back becomes very cool with the peppermint sensation. So if you're like, hmm, my shoulders feel really chilly, but my back, my middle back doesn't, then you know that you probably missed a spot. This is also helpful when you are rinsing because if you are letting the water beat down on you and you still feel like you have a little cold patch, then you can kind of rub and get that soap off. You're going to want to wash your tattoo until all of the plasma is off. If you cannot identify plasma or you're not familiar with it, it is just going to feel slick and oily to the touch when you are running it under hot water. Washing your hands and gentle rubbing will get the plasma off. If you have fake or sharp acrylic nails, make sure you are gently using the pads of your fingertips and not your nails. Keeping your hand like this can help. After your tattoo is completely washed, you can either air dry or pat with a paper towel. After that, you're going to repeat that process, at least personally for me, for three days. Wrapping your tattoo before you go to sleep, waking up, washing all the plasma and the extra ink off in the shower, making sure it's all nice and smooth and clean, and then letting it air dry. I like to wear loose clothing while I heal, and because it's on my back, as a person with breasts, I wear kind of a really nice soft bra, no underwire, and the strap is kind of paltry. You can find different bras for your specifications out there. When I had my ribs tattooed, I went no bra, but I am also like smaller chested, so I recognize that some people can't do that. 
There are great stick-on bras that are out there and even pedals if you just want to go no bra but maybe not have any nipples showing. Plenty of options for you. During my sternum tattoo, I wore a sports bra just because it offered a lot of support up top but not, not too much support down below where the sternum tattoo was. Personally, I really like these halter top bras because they don't have straps that go down the back and because I don't have to pull them over my head, they still have a clasp in the back. I got this at Urban Outfitters. I believe it was $20. So different loose fitting clothing. If you feel like you're going to be outside and maybe exposed to the sunlight and UV rays, I have a couple different outfits in my wardrobe that are UV sensitive. I got them from the store Uniqlo. You can definitely check out Uniqlo or other places. Uniqlo might be the cheapest place for you to get UV sensitive clothing. But if you have to go to work and you may not necessarily be able to wear certain things, leggings are always better than tights because tights can be stretched and irritate the tattoo, almost like a cheesecloth kind of situation. If you can find fleece lined leggings and maybe you're not out in the public, maybe you're in an air conditioning space if it's, if it's warm outside, these are options for you. Anything oversized, breathable, these are the best things. After your third day, this would be a time when I would start to introduce lotion into my tattoo healing. However, I think dry healing is also a very valuable thing too. I've had success with both methods. I also incorporated some of these methods into healing some of my piercings. The classic leave it the fuck alone method was something I used to heal a lot of my piercings as well. So after that, do nothing. Keep your tattoo clean cleaning it in the shower the same way with your Dr. Bronner's solution. But after that, you don't have to wrap it, but I do recommend sleeping in clothing if you generally sleep naked. That way your body isn't being exposed to any bacteria that might be on your bed sheets, pet dander, boyfriend dander, anything like that. Sleeping in loose fitting, maybe gym clothes kind of style stuff. Sleep that way until your tattoo is completely healed. During the day, you're going to want to wear loose fitting clothing so it doesn't irritate the tattoo as it peels. Your tattoo will still heal the same way that you are used to with the lotion method, but almost at a slower rate with a more of a tightness to it. I would say that my healing method is kind of half of this because I generally just put lotion on like once a day when I feel the tattoo is getting tight. Because I am someone who scratches or itches my tattoos, um, as a dry healing method you might find that your tattoos might feel tight and itchy and irritated and you just have to find a way to ignore it. And smacking your tattoo is definitely a good option if you are a picker or a scratcher. The lifespan of a healing tattoo, I get a lot of questions like, hey, my tattoo is still silver skin, my tattoo still appears scaly, still appeals, appears shiny. I would say that it takes about nine weeks total for your tattoo to be completely healed and completely yours. And this is only if everything went well. If you picked your tattoo, if a, a large piece of it was disrupted, if you got an injury on your tattoo in those nine weeks, it might take a little bit longer. I had a tattoo that took about two months to heal because I got it in New York, a really small tattoo, and thought I could just completely ignore it. It was actually rubbed in my jeans a little too much and after that, because of the abrasion, it was just really difficult for it to heal after that and it's still kind of silver skin to this day. Hey everyone, so I'm checking back in after a week of dry healing, a week and a day, and I can say that although my back is really itchy, like I'm scratching it right now, my healing, dry healing has been really cool. I can say that my experience will be the same as yours. 
because I am healing a larger piece that is like more spread out. But dry healing for me the last week has been pretty successful. There was some flaking and stuff like that, but I feel like I was wearing very loose clothes a lot more than I normally do. I have not put lotion on my back yet since receiving the tattoo. Although I only had two colors added in this last time, I would say that they took up a large area. And I would say they healed pretty quickly. I think dry healing is a total, totally like valuable method, something you could probably definitely check out if you are healing something that's like in your back, out of the way, not bumping into things like that, not something you can like really easily scratch, like I cannot get back there really. I'm like looking around for things I could like scratch it with, but I would say if you're getting a back tattoo, dry healing is definitely really cool. But I don't think I would ever dry heal like anything on my lower arm. Maybe my upper arm if I could wear like a loose shirt over top of it. Or like maybe something on my stomach. But definitely like not on my limbs. So if you've ever dry healed or you feel like you have some sort of method down, definitely let me know. Um, check out my other back tattoo videos if you want to see more about my back tattoo. And definitely like and subscribe if you want to see more Tattoo Talk Tuesdays. Sometimes I don't always get them out on Tuesday, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. I love you guys so much, and until next time, bye! Hey everybody, it is Quickened. Um, welcome back to Tattoo Talk Tuesday. So, I just woke up, kind of. I mean, 